consistent self-improvement everybody you are now listening to american gypsy podcast i am your host classic and i am here with my co-host gypsy and today we also have another I'm neat i'm a uh, guest co-hosting today uh from atlanta and we also have a special guest suzanne peters she is a motivational speaker author manifesting and business coach as well as a founder of women to women network Welcome to the show, Suzanne. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure, <laughs> pleasure to have having you. you. So to get started, of course, I'm sure our listeners can hear a little bit of that accent. Tell us a little bit about where you're from. Well, I am from the beautiful Caribbean islands of Trinidad and Tobago. Ah. Two islands that make up one country. One thing I can tell you that you'll definitely remember about Trinidad and Tobago. We have the best carnival in the world. Oh. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> yes. The best so carnival kind of... in the world. <laughs> yeah. And the, the water, you know, if I look at Lil Duval's post and he lives, I guess, in the Bahamas and the water looks amazing. I'm a snorkel. Beautiful. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's something that attracts me to a place. But, you know, we'll come back to the, to, did you that conversation later <laughs> did you grow up in uh trinidad or um yeah i grew up in trinidad and tobago i lived there all my life okay. i only uh fented out of the caribbean about five years ago okay. mm -hmm. what what brought you to america my husband okay it's <laughs> <laughs> a good reason it's a good reason yeah my my husband is um military so you know everywhere but after this his last term um, he was in afghanistan and then he decided okay babe that's it and i was like yes <laughs> <laughs> so what is it like growing up in as far as the bahamas no, or where trinidad. you're from trinidad trinidad, sorry, trinidad. trinidad so, like any other country in the caribbean is pretty laid back it's completely different from America. Like seriously, especially, well, I don't want to say especially for Trinidad because it's a lot of places, which is laid back. Yes, we have jobs. Yes, we have careers, but our way of thinking is a lot different. I realize from a lot of people in the US. For instance, things people would stress about here, we're not even going to stress about it's like okay if you can fix the problem why stress about it if you can't fix the problem why stress about it let's go to the beach <laughs> that's that a good like attitude life. yeah that sounds like <laughs> island life a simple life yeah but island life is pretty pretty great i practically lived by the beach so yeah it's a big transition for me <laughs> so what was one of the big um changes or one of the the biggest culture shocks that you experienced when you moved to the u.s biggest culture, culture shocks or just the biggest changes what did you have to adapt to you mean other than the weather <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you have any idea what it's like to live all your life in a country that is summer all year round wow mm. You say all year summer, round. Summer. January to the summer. Yeah. I mean, but then coming to the US, it's winter. <laughs> Spring is still practically winter because it's still very cold. Yeah. One day it's hot, the next day it's freezing. I am so confused with this whole weather thing. Yeah. And the summers here are like 10 times the weather in the Caribbean. It's that hot compared. Yeah. I cannot take the, the summer sun here in the US. <laughs> and I'm very used to it, comfortable in the Caribbean. So that was like, whoa, this, I am still adjusting to that, mind you. Mm. <laughs> you should I'm definitely still... check out uh, Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, that might be a little bit more balanced than. Um... <laughs> yeah, we're here in Los Angeles and it's, it's, we still get the chilly side, but the weather is a complete different from, you know, we don't get that winter. The same way at least right oh, here okay. in the city of of los angeles yeah we don't get the ice oh yeah. so as you as you mentioned that i have a confession to make yes 
I've never seen snow. What? Really? You are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. I've never seen snow at all. Besides on television, I mean. And I'm right, now. right, but yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> I wish that's, I could say that. Yeah, that's going to be a, a real life experience for you when the time comes. Yeah. We moved from Ethiopia straight into Minnesota, which is like the, mm -hmm. one of the coldest places in the U.S. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that was that's so crazy. scary. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's so scary. Yeah. So, yeah, but... how did you get into um, as far as um, self development coaching and, and coaching? I was just answering my calling. You know, I got to a point in my life where I just wanted to, to do something different. At that point in time, when I started this, I didn't know about anything called influencer. <laughs> I didn't know about anything called life coach. Like, seriously, I didn't know about those things at all. I just wanted to do something different. And when I first started it, it was like a way of me expressing myself and sharing what I, some of the things I was dealing with and overcoming some of the challenges and just putting it out there. And by doing that, I started to just connect with people and the kind of messages people started to send me in my inbox. And I was like, whoa, really? From this? <laughs> I was just doing it from here, you know, just wanting to, uh, uh, an avenue. To, to put all this stuff that I have in my mind, my thoughts, and it just turned into something a lot bigger than the way it initially started. It's just completely different. But one thing I always wanted to do, though, was speaking. Mm. I used to just fantasize about being on this stage and giving this amazing speech, and that has always been a big fantasy of mine. And even though I've on several speed stages, it's still growing. So I still haven't accomplished that fantasy yet because as I accomplish one little thing, it expands and it just keeps expanding. But yeah. <laughs> Did I answer too many questions? Yet? No, you're good. That's great. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about the Women to Women Network. Um, what is that? Woman to Woman Network. I wanted to to keep it the way I originally intended it for, for it to be a platform for women to share to empower others. So it started off with me alone sharing. And then I started inviting other women to share their message, their story, or whatever they are um, expert at to share it, but share it in a way that someone can learn something from it. It can benefit others. So I would use, so you would always hear me tell people, share something to empower other women, basically. Whether it's their story, their book, their blog, it really doesn't matter because in every piece of us that we share, there is something that others can learn from. And by doing that, still wasn't satisfied. <laughs> so I went on to, to create the Woman to Woman International Network which is now a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And now we are all about empowering women to use everything they've been through, to use their story, their challenges, everything they've overcome, to use that as the foundation to start their own empowerment business, as well as giving small business grants. So it started off with just the story sharing side of things, and it's just growing into something a lot bigger. Isn't God great? <laughs> yeah. What are some of the challenges that you've um, faced with as far as trying to, um, as a 501, uh, to build or, or gain funds or to get funds or grants or any of those things? How, many, how much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> we have plenty of time. <laughs> First of all, People on the whole, looking at you doing something, I realize a lot of people have in the back of their mind this question, what is the catch? Mm. What are you doing this for? What are you getting out of this? Mm. This money going in your pocket? That is one thing I realize. So <laughs> I would let 
literally go all out to show people what we do, how we do it, and how they can be a part of it. Apart from that, they are still, regardless of how much good you are doing here or how you try to involve people, there are still people who always look at it as what's in it for me. That is one of the biggest challenges. What's in it for me? Because as a 501c, yes, it, it was actually put that way to encourage people to be a part of it and be involved. So I'm like, okay, I was advised, this is the best way to do it. And after giving it some consideration, you know, I agree. I was like, okay, yeah, that, that's a good idea. Let's do this. But then... When you have to come to someone, even with small businesses, so I'm, right now I'm actually focusing on big businesses. God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm focusing on bigger businesses because they more understand the whole concept of being involved in a 501c. Whereas the ordinary individual, their mentality is what's in it for me. So I found a way to actually kind of bridge that gap with the what's in it for me, and it's a 501c3 we're giving back. So what I've done is I've incorporated, or I'm, let me say, trying to incorporate more women like myself who have their own businesses, who are content creators and coaches, and I've invited them to be a part of the organization since it's a membership organization. They can join as a member simply for the purpose of contributing so that we can be able to bless another woman with a business grant or we can bless another woman with a website or have this one start her book simply for the purpose of being able to invest in others they can be a part of the organization and take advantage by sharing on woman to woman's platform so I, I don't know if you got a chance to check out the website we got a lot of traffic on the website so that is one of the ways I've been able to get people to be involved and be a part of it by sharing content on the website, by being listed in the business directory, by sharing their information on our social media pages. So that's like, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's unfolding. So, so I can't say it's working the way I want it to work because I really don't want people to be like, what's in it for me? I'm trying to break away from that. But that I would say is my biggest challenge right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and even with the, with you saying, like you said, what's in it for me, we're kind of seeing even though that may not even be as far as the final, you know, question with certain people, because we just yesterday got a chance to go to uh, walk good LA which is a nonprofit um, yoga type of event here okay. in um, Los Angeles. And they also express their struggles with, you know, raising funds. And this is a organization that gives free yoga. You know, they set up a big, you know, rent yeah. out a park and set up a speaker. And, you know, so the people oh, are getting something from it. You know, what's in it for them, that's there. But you also, you know, I also still wondered even with, this is such an amazing event, you know, how do they still struggle with getting funding, you know, yeah. as a nonprofit? So that's one of the reasons why I asked that. And like I said, we understand the the struggle with that. Mm -hmm. My um, nonprofit consultant, I have a coach in that area to help me uh, with the raising funds part of things. She recently put together a plan for us and it does involve also having an event later in the year. It's supposed to be a big event, so we'll see how that goes. So that plan is very fresh. We literally just put it together. <laughs> so she is definitely going to be at the forefront of that to help us get sponsors and get other people involved. So I am praying from now that that works out the way I hope I want it to. You know, so it's like... Yeah. And so course, hopefully that will make things go a bit different. <laughs> and it does take time as well. My mother also has a, she lives in Mississippi and she has a 5013C as well. And she kind of does what she can. She's had it for yeah. a few years now, but she's also into um, acting as well. No. So she kind of balances it out that she can. But 
it's a it's challenge. definitely a, a challenge yeah, yeah. as far yeah. as with raising funds yeah. I did get to look um, at your site. I saw the directory. That's why I was curious. Like, how do people get, are the people in the directory, are those part of the, your Women to Women network? Or how do you get yeah. into the directory yeah. as a per person who's not in it? The, the people currently in the directory are part of the network. But um, what I did recently, I think it should still be in the shop where I created, like for people who just wanted to put, to be a part of the directory and not be involved in the network, we did put together a plan for that. But I think with the reconstructing of the website over the past two weeks, I think it was taken down actually. But there was a monthly plan, um, uh, sorry, an annual plan for that. There was an annual plan for that. Yeah, that it isn't removed completely. It's just that with the, changes we've making it's just everything is being you know scrutinized crossing the t's dotting the i's so we would go back to it it's just that we're making sure that things are set up the way it's supposed to be can't have any loose ends especially in america <laughs> so do you have a podcast of your own Yes, I have a podcast called Woman to Woman Conversations. I know some women who I'd be inviting to be on my podcast. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're not a woman. <laughs> but it's Woman to Woman Conversations. My vision for the Woman to Woman Conversations is huge. And even it goes outside of Woman to Woman, the organization. But it's huge. But basically, it's just women having conversations with the same goal in mind. Sharing their story, sharing a message, just for the purpose of empowering other women. Because literally, we can all learn and benefit from each other. So that's what it's all about, just women. So I recently started back, um, no, I recently started doing interviews and I didn't used to do interviews before I would simply invite a woman and ask her to share a message and she'll just share a message but I'm trying something different and I recently started recording some interviews with some woman and I don't know how you all do it <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you all do it the talking the editing the fix oh my goodness <laughs> I mean while we are conversing, it's fun, right? But yes. then when you have to go and edit this and fix this and, mm. you know, we might laugh and say something out of the way in between and you have to crop that out. It's like, I don't know how you all do it. I keep on you guys. We keep it raw. You know, we cut off the beginning. We cut off the end. No. Anything between that. Of course, if there's a get. mishap or something, <laughs> we will edit it. But. We try to keep it natural. Yeah. Because we know some people will cut out like the ums and ahs and all of this tedious stuff, but yeah, we yeah. don't really do that. <laughs> we don't yeah. get into well, it. That's definitely too much. Yeah. yeah. I but, used to do it for another podcast, but not for this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, I have to admit, tonight I got to scare because I forgot, I'm like, oh my God, I have to go on camera. Let me go cool my hair. <laughs> <laughs> It took us some time to get into it, of course. This is like season two and forever for us because we kind of just going to keep it going and kind of cut yeah. the seasons. But season one was a it was a good trial. You know, it took some learning experience. And now we're getting better with each amazing guest that we have. And the guests definitely help. So with you taking um, more guests on, you'll, you'll feel more comfortable with you. With each, I hope so. You know, you, there's still the nervousness there, though. Every time, yeah, there's still the nervousness there. But we're definitely, like I said, some of our guests are probably half of our audience, so oh, okay. it definitely helps with networking and um, just building um, with with people. When you have, it's not that you have know. guests on. It's not that you know. I don't be nervous. And there are so many amazing women out there. That's the easy part. Yeah. The hard part is sticking to the routine. 
you have to sit down and conduct these. And that is the hard part for me. Keeping up with it, that is the hard part. It's like, whoa, this would, I have to get used to it. So, so I'm not being too hard on myself, but I, I'm still commending you. <laughs> so I guess while we're here for us, tip wise, even for our audience to let you know um, a little bit about the podcasting thing. We, we use um, Rodecaster Pro. Um, yes. It's a, like a $700 device. Um, it's a mixing board. It allows you to use four microphones and oh. you can take a phone call. We're also able to hook it up with our computer. Um, that's what allows us to feed our audio into the Zoom. Oh. And um, you don't have to edit too much because it's made for podcasting and it already has like noise cancellation and Wow. So right, what you hear right now it's raw from the roadcaster. And these are like hundred dollar mics. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, the mics, this mic is a pod mic and it's made for the road. Okay. It's a road pod mic. So it's made for podcasting. So wow. it's one of the things. That. It's one of the it's an investment, but it definitely makes the wow. recording process a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. So for the consistency, it's a little bit easier. I mean, it's a little bit of investment in the beginning, but it makes the process if you're going to be doing it um, consistently, it makes Ooh. it easier because you're not having to edit the audio as much and you can, um, you can even program sounds into it uh, that you can play or any audience claps and things like that. So it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. So you see why you want to be experts? <laughs> <laughs> Well, before this, we were doing, um, I was doing a studio recording. So sound quality was always something that we paid attention to or we were interested in. Okay. So okay. It just kind of okay. folded over into the podcast world. And- yes, I'm taking it all in from the experts. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> and you know, I, this I is- wouldn't take notes now because we're recording, but I'll go back and listen and take my notes. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll, of course, have links and stuff for the peop- a lot of people that's interested because some of our guests, a lot of our guests are actually, some of them are getting into podcasting. Podcasting. Yeah, yeah because it's a big market. Yes. Huge. And a lot of them don't know about the Roadcaster. And it's... Well, it's the first time I heard about it, too, so I believe that. Amazing. It is yeah. absolutely amazing. Yeah, and it definitely helps. Like you said, with consistency... It'll give mm-hmm. you that option because podcasting is audio. So it's going to get the audio. Sometimes we have some hiccups with our um, videos. We're dealing with mm-hmm. the internet. So we may not get the, the video, but we'll always have the audio. So it's also kind of a backup to the backup for your recording. It always, as far as never fails, you're going to always get the audio. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So, One of the things you mentioned um, before we got started is um, how to manifest the life you want. So for people who are kind of struggling, um, you know, with manifesting with their goals, like what are some tips that you can give them? Oh, let me see. Where should I begin? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Tip number one, manifesting is simple. (laughs) It's not complicated. It's supposed to be simple. So if it sounds too simple, just remember, it's supposed to be simple. I think that is one of the things that get a lot of people is how simple the whole idea of manifesting is. Because like for me, when I first found out for this thing, I was in a really bad place in my life. But the way I found out about it on YouTube by accident, <laughs> it raised a question in my mind where I was like, hmm, I need to find out more about this. So, of course, I went digging and digging and digging and did research and kept researching and kept learning because by this time I was practically obsessed. Kept learning and kept digging and I realized, wow, we are such powerful beings. We can literally tap into the source of all power, which is God, 
Sometimes I would say the universe, but at the end of the day, I'm a born again Christian. I'm still talking about God, right? So we are able, he really did make us in his image and likeness, so to speak, that we can actually tap into his power source. When I first realized this, I was like, huh. I mean, I knew there was more to to us. I knew there was more to me, but I didn't know how to to tap into it and access it. So when I learned all about the law of attraction and manifesting, I was like, you know what? I'm going to learn all I can about this. I'm going to change my life because, and at this time when I was talking about changing my life, let me tell you, I was broke. I was depressed. I was lonely. I was already evicted. I was sleeping on a relative couch. I had literally nothing to call my own but some clothes. I was in a real unhappy place to the point where I was trying to figure out the best way to take my life because I couldn't take it anymore. So I'm talking about you being at a point where you are rock bottom and telling myself, you know what? I could do this. I could do this. I went and find out all I can about this. I will prove it as work. I will test it on myself, use it to change my life. And then you know what? I will teach other people how to do it. January, I don't want to lie. 2017. Was it 2017? I went head first, intentional manifesting journaling. I literally changed my life completely. I'm talking about before that. I had people in my life who I know didn't belong in my life. Friends, negativity, bad influence. I was so obsessed with this thing after learning everything I learned. At the beginning of the year, it was just like psh, cuts. People had no, people thought I wasn't even in the country. People was worried about me. What happened to Susan? Susan was there, you know, it's just that Susan was in her own world, focused on what it is she wanted to accomplish. In one year time, by the end, December, not even December of that same year, I was living a completely different life. Mm. Seriously, I had money in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> I had my own house, my own car. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> my own car. I had, I was traveling. I was enjoying life. And it's only when things start to unfold, like just happen, and you find yourself like, wait a minute. Wow. So anyway, you see how far I went astray there? <laughs> <laughs> If it is you are new to manifesting, just remember manifesting simply means creating. You can manifest the life you want. As the same as saying, you can create the life you want. So don't think of it as any kind of woo-woo, anything. Just get rid of all of that thought. Now, the first step to accomplishing anything is to know exactly what you want. I knew everything I wanted. I knew the house I wanted down to the lake in the back. And honey, I have my lake in the back. Hey. I knew my husband. I knew all his qualities. The only thing I didn't know was his feet. But I knew all of it. So the first step is to know exactly what you want. You don't want a house. You want what type of house? One story, two tell a story. How many bedrooms? What kind of neighborhood? Be detailed. That is how obsessed I was. And then I realized most of my, I started journaling. Actually, I was journaling before I got to this point, but it wasn't intentionally. It was just writing stuff down when I when thoughts came to mind. But when I decided to make this transition, I went into intentional journaling. I'm talking about intentional where I would spend an hour on mornings, an hour on night. And after I'm finished journaling, I would get myself in a comfortable state. Now I'm giving you all my secrets here. (laughs) (laughs) But this is literally what I used to do and it made me feel so good. I did it as often as I could. After, when I would write in my journal, 
everything I decide I want, I would script it. I had books upon books of the same thing written over and over about my house and when I walk into my house, how I felt. And when I walked out to my backyard and my garden, I mean, it's intentional. So think of it as intentional dreaming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I know a lot of people, when they talk about manifesting, they just talk about using affirmations, but that's only a small piece of the puzzle. It's way more than that. That's just a small piece of it. So after I'm finished journaling, as in scripting, as in writing my story the way I wanted it to unfold, and I did this every day, I would get into a comfortable state, usually like laying down. And this is something I can do like that now, whereas a lot of adults have problems doing that. I can daydream a whole movie in my head. That is something adults have problems with. Because, you know, when we are children, yeah, we, we daydream like anything. Yeah. Like nothing. Oh, and you see the sky and look the plane coming. Your child, you're seeing it, you're feeling it, you're excited about it. But as an adult, if you can take yourself back to that state, it's like a whole different world. So when I started doing this and I realized, oh, I was feeling the excitement. In my dream, my, my imaginary husband, <laughs> when he would hold me, the way I would feel was like, oh, I knew I was love. I was married before. I was in an abusive relationship. So I know what it's like to be in a relationship and not be loved. So I knew exactly what I wanted in this relationship. And when I tell you, this man, I went. <laughs> God made him for me. Nobody else. That's why nothing else ever was done with him. God made that man especially for me. Can you believe? He is like my twin. <laughs> Serious. I am mischievous as hell. And he is just like me. If I think a bad thought, bet your bottom dollar. He think the same thought, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with that in sync, that's what I'm talking about. I never thought I would love somebody as much and be loved even more back in return, you know? And that all started from knowing what I wanted. So keeping it simple, know what you want. Don't just keep it in your head, write it down. Write it down, believing that it's possible for you. Write it down the way you want it to happen because by writing things down, it's like you're bringing it out of your imaginary state into reality. You now have what you want in physical form, even though it's on paper, it's in physical form. So now you connecting that and getting into the state where you are seeing it in your own mind and getting in the feeling, you know, they say, um, fake it till you make it. Yeah. Uh Uh-uh. Feel it till you see it. Big difference. Mm. Big, big difference. So that feeling is what seals the deal. And that have no choice but to manifest in this world. I mean, you know how your subconscious mind operates, right? Yeah. As long as whatever your subconscious mind believes, it has to manifest in the world. Your subconscious mind don't know you're daydreaming. It don't know that that hasn't happened yet. All, all my subconscious mind knew is I was happy. I was living a life of my dreams. I was married. I was, that's all my subconscious mind knew. So it had no choice for me to be able to manifest those things in my reality. And the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad you mentioned like your process because sometimes I struggle with details versus being general. You know, because some people say, you know, be a little bit more general, like know what you want. But when you're like journaling and things like that, um, don't have too much detail, you know, leave room for the universe and things like that. But and there's some that say, you know, be very detailed, you know, down to every little, you know, piece of what you want. So there's a but to that. Mm. You don't. Give the universe a deadline. Right. That is the difference. Yeah. So you be as detailed as you want, but you don't tell the universe 
I want this by this day next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that. I mean, when you, with you, when you're planning your goals, it's okay for you to say, you know what, I want to accomplish this by the end of the year. But a lot of times we give the universe deadlines, but we don't know that there's someone else who is a part of our journey that the universe is redirecting them to meet us. See, you can't give the universe a deadline because then when you work with that deadline, you're like, you see, this thing doesn't work and you just give up. This time it's working, it's unfolding, but you just have to be patient and consistent with it. So yes, be very, very detailed. Just don't give it a deadline. <laughs> <laughs> so times where, you know, you're not exactly like um, at your best, you know, uh, what are some things that you do to kind of break the negative thought patterns? I dance. <laughs> I, I'm serious. <laughs> I would literally just put on YouTube and dance. You see, there was a point in time where, when I wasn't feeling my best or I was feeling down, I would allow myself to get into this depressive state. And what I noticed at that point in time, I would, yes, I always, I really like music, but then I would find myself listening to some depressing music somebody hard got broken and they're there and they're crying and i don't know why we do that so now from the time i realize i'm like hmm, i will actually pick up my phone because i don't want to stay in that state i would pick up my soon and i would put on some music most of the times i would put on something for my country soca music <laughs> I would be just, it would just change my mood completely and I would just be dancing and whether I'm cleaning, whether I'm just laying down, whether I'm working, it changes your mood. Now that's what works for me. You have to find something that works for you. So once I get that spark now, it's easier for me to shift into work mode or shift into something else I know I'm supposed to be doing. But that is my technique for breaking myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, I keep losing my. I, I just didn't want to come back in with the Trinidad questions yet. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Just let me all finish. <laughs> Please help me plan He's, my vacation to Trinidad. I know he's <laughs> right. still on <laughs> Trinidad right now. I'm like I'm on the water. I can like all I think about is the snorkeling and some nice blue water, <laughs> and like so. Right for let's say if somebody was thinking to or having a vision of trying to pick the dream place that they wanted to move to and just so happened was thinking maybe the Trinidad or what do I need to be prepared for? Or what do we need to be prepared for? Why do you want to move to Trinidad? <laughs> or, or just, you know, somewhere where the water is blue and warm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to ask that question. <laughs> right, I'm like, I'm sure it's beautiful. <laughs> oh, what do you need to be prepared for? You need to be prepared for people minding your business. <laughs> <laughs> That's every country. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, American. Oh, yeah, come here. Oh, <laughs> what do you need to be prepared for? You need to be prepared for tasty food, <laughs> hot sun. <laughs> um, so if I'm going there for the first time, like what, uh, what city would you recommend? Okay, if you're going there for the first time, you definitely want to go in the city, Port of Spain. Okay. There is some nice hotels in the city where you're in the center of everything. Queen Spark Savannah is right there. You can get your fresh coconut water. Oh my God, I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> you can get your fresh and watch now. When I say fresh coconut, Queen Spark Savannah, I think it's still the biggest roundabout in the world. And on one point it was, I think it still is. But around the Savannah, there are men with their truck, their pickup trucks. And the entire back of the truck is just coconuts, fresh coconuts from on the tree. 
And they will just pick it up and put a straw in it. Well, I never wanted a straw. I like taking the whole thing and putting it to my head. <laughs> and they would cut it open and you just turn a brandy and scrape all the jelly from it. Oh, the best. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely want to go in the city. And since you're in the city, you're also close to my favorite beach, which is Maracas. Mm. Once you go to the Maracas beach, you have bacon shark. Oh. Mm. Bacon shark, you have all the goodies. On the way to the beach, you're getting all the sweets, the kuma, the, I know you don't know what these things are, but they're sweets. Yeah, we're <laughs> I like trying them, traditional yeah. food when I go to yeah, country. Our so. islands. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And you definitely want to visit Tobago too. Tobago is our sister isle. It's smaller, much smaller than Trinidad, but it is beautiful. Beautiful. Actually, Tobago, we are right next door, and Tobago beaches are even better than Trinidad beaches. Yeah, I don't get it, you know? But you know what? You even want to go around carnival time. Now, due to COVID, there haven't been any carnival for the past, I think this year made it three years. Wow. 2021, 20, 22. Yeah, there haven't been any carnival. I mean, safety first, right? Mm -hmm. But I know for sure when carnival comes back, possibly next year, I don't know, it is going to be out of this world. <laughs> when is carnival time? It's usually in February. Okay. okay. Yeah, so no sorry. specific date every year. Just usually in February. That's the, okay. similar to Brazil. Yeah. 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 Brazil have the flashing lights and all of that, but we had a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to visit there one day, though. Yes. Yeah, I've been to Brazil. I like to visit. Yeah, yeah. yeah but like not for the visit. carnival. But yeah, I've been to Brazil. Yeah. No, I want to see the carnival actually. Yeah. I've only seen it on television. And I think if I can compare Brazil's carnival in person to, to ours, then I can really say, you know what? Okay, yeah, we really have the best carnival. Or if I have to give them one, I would just give them one. <laughs> you know, but yeah. yeah. So what is one of your favorite um, places to visit or that you've ever been to that is just kind of mind-blowing? I wouldn't say mind blowing, but it reminds me of home. Um, when I say home, it reminds me to my favorite beach, Maracas Beach. Mm. I went to, no, no, yes, not Orlando just now. Oh my God. I can't remember the name. I went to a beach in Florida oh. last year. I can't remember the name of the beach. Now. That is so embarrassing. But anyway, <laughs> I know it. I just can't remember it right now. But when I went there, I was like, oh my God. I feel like on Maracas Beach. It was so good. It was not Miami. It wasn't Orlando. It was before there. It was Fort, Fort so Lauderdale good. Fort Lauderdale or Jacksonville? Not Fort Lauderdale either. Okay. Sarasota? I don't know. I'm just coming up with this. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm definitely interested because I, I can say in comparison, um, like I said, we've been to South Africa and in uh, Durban, and I could say Long Beach reminded no? me Long Beach, or or I could say Durban reminded me of Long Beach, or Long Beach kind of reminds me of Durban, South Africa, the port. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess I've always wanted to visit there, Africa. Yeah. Any part of Africa, to be honest. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah. I just want to make sure before I die that I make it to each and every country there. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I want to curiosity about other countries, other parts of the world. I mean, I used to be there back in the day in high school or college. All of it is like taking such a back seat. Now, your mic like, in. any opportunity I can find to just visit a country in Africa, it's such a high yeah. priority in the travel travel list. Like. Like right now, whenever we travel, it's usually four of us, two couples, we travel. But for some reason, they always want to go to the Caribbean. And I'm like, I've been to the Caribbean. I've been to several <laughs> islands in the Caribbean. And to me, all of them, they say, I don't want to go to the Caribbean. And they just don't get it. I want to go to, to Europe. I want to go to all those different countries, you know? Oh, my yeah. God. 
I yeah. want to go to the Caribbean. <laughs> I know. Can you believe I haven't been to a single, except from Mexico, that we went um, yeah. in 2021. Yeah. I've not been to the Caribbean, South America, Central America. Yeah, the water is special there. I will say that. I've been to a lot of different beaches around the world, and yeah. that Caribbean sea is pretty amazing. I look at little Duval videos, and I just want to grab snorkels and get out there in the water. Like, man, I was swimming that water all day. So I have a question. Um, um, you know, with like Trinidad and a lot of the Caribbean uh, countries being pretty close to here. I mean, they're, they could easily be a four-day trip of destinations, right? Um, so I've been trying to find like places that would be considered safe, like safe to wander, to not be in a resort, you know? So how is Trinidad when it comes to safety, um, especially as a woman? as a female hold on to that question right because <laughs> I'm being, honest. being in trinidad to me it's safe i'm used to it and i see tourists all the time wandering the city i've never heard of anything bad happening really although i'm pretty sure in reality things have so I really don't know how to answer that question. I mean, if you as a resident don't see it as, you know, I feel like uh -huh. it is a safe place for you, then most likely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tourists. I used to, like, one of my um favorite places, even to, to manifest and just get into my zone, was also like the Queen's Park Savannah. So I would go to the city and go to the savannah, and the, you know, like the botanical gardens? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how the savannah is. When I say savannah, it's like a big botanical gardens. Mm -hmm. And I will go find a nice little spot and sit and eat and read and lay back and just close my eyes. And I never felt uncomfortable or threatened in any way. You know, so safe as in that sense, yeah. I don't know about safe, but going out in the night and going party or anything, okay? Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's a different kind of thing. night is a right. different story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, yeah, I never had any problem. Well, before we get ready to close things out um is there anything like special projects you'd like to share with the upcoming with our listeners that you have coming up or special some special project. links to where they can find you. where they can find can i you. show you something yeah sure hey Ooh, all your right book? manifest it i can see okay the woman to woman manifested journal okay Nice. I might need that. <laughs> is that um yeah I am launching this this month. This is actually one of the proofs I got. So this is my newest project. Okay. I am so addicted to journaling. I'm like, you know what? I need everybody needs to get addicted to this. Like seriously. Okay. Everybody needs to get addicted. It's funny. My sister has been getting me journals since I was a kid. And I'm like, I know it's a cool concept, but every time I sit down and I'm like, I'm going to journal, I'm like, nothing wants to come out. So I'm like, what do people journal about? Like, so you're the first one to give me an example of like, oh, why not create what you want in a skit? <laughs> create the story. And or mm -hmm. just pick one thing or one area of your life. And just fantasize about it. Yeah. That's what you call scripting. Or just ask yourself, you could also ask yourself probing questions. Like, are you married? No. Okay. So let's talk about that area. You know, I like that area, it's right? It's funny that you said earlier that, you know, you manifested your husband. And that yeah. was one of the things I told her to like you know, in terms of finding the right person, you know, I told her to kind of write it down because I felt yeah. like I wrote it down and I found my match. So I'm like, <laughs> you know what? Uh, <laughs> I told her to write it down. And so you're like the second person now. To <laughs> but, but you know what I, I forgot to, talk, to tell you? Mm -hmm. While I was manifesting him, he was manifesting me. Mm. 
that crazy son of a gun <laughs> bought this ring, bought my wedding ring. He didn't know. No, seriously. That's he didn't know he was going to meet the love of his life. He didn't know when it was going to happen. He was like, he's the, well, he prays a lot. He's also a deacon in church. But I've never met someone in my life that has such a strong, a close relationship with God, ever. And I remember talking to God and saying, and even writing it in my journal, saying, I want a husband who loves God more than he loves me. I remember saying that, and I got that. But I realized only when he gave me this story with this ring, he's like, he was walking around one day, and he just went into this jewelry store. Now, we have been, he had been praying and talking to God for what he wanted because the way he put it, that was the only thing missing from his life, someone he could share it with. Mm -hmm. And he walked into the jewelry store, and when he saw this ring, he said, that is the ring for my wife. And he bought it. And I'm talking about a couple, about two years before we even met. Wow. <laughs> wow. And since then, that ring was just sitting in the safe. <laughs> wow. When he, when he was in Afghanistan, his brother had it. His brother had it keeping in the safe. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I said, when you... Uh, working towards manifesting something you can't give it a deadline because you don't know who else is a part of that plan mm. so our energies everything just aligned perfectly and we found each other so pick one area of your life you know you want if you well if you want to get married because i hear women say all the time they don't want to get married but then after they say that a million times then they want to know why they're single or why no one is proposing to them. So careful what you're saying to yourself, right? So if in fact, this is something you want, just journal about that. Remember, a journal is something private to you, absolutely no one has to see it. So that could be like your closest friend, anything in your journal, just keep it safe. So your thoughts, your fantasies, everything, feel free to write about that. So you're still wondering what to write about? Me? <laughs> Someone yes. I want to write about? Um, yes and no, right? Because <laughs> <funny, laughs> I remember a few years back, um, mom telling me, you know, like write down the characteristics you want in a man, right? Yes. And a lot of it was kind of hard to do, but there's always a thought in the back of my mind that you should be careful what you ask for because you may think you want something, but the reality is you might not want it or you might not like it. And so um, sometimes I'm hesitant to like put out what I want because I'm like, what if I haven't tried it out before? What if when I try it out, I realize, ew, no, that's not, that doesn't <laughs> fit with me, you know? Um, <laughs> so. Well, you know, journaling can fix all those questions, right? In what way? Really? Yeah, because it will give you clarity. So, for instance, you from the time you start probing your own mind, you're able to release more and dig deeper and dig deeper. So, what you just said there, you might think you want something, but you don't want, but you realize you don't want it. That is fine because then you know, the next question would be, okay, if I don't want this, what do I want? And you start focusing on what you do want. Next thing you realize you're writing what you do want. And you're like, oh, yeah, this is good, but maybe not so much that. And you move on to that. So it's a constant thing. But the more you journal, all you have to do is be honest with yourself. Be completely honest with yourself ask the right questions and answer a lot of people ask themselves questions but they don't take the time to answer answer yourself and answer in detail as much as possible because doing that in detail it gives you clarity and the more clarity you can get the more you can see it 
if you can see it, you can imagine it, you can feel it, and everything will just get in sync after a while. But you have to start somewhere. So even if it's to start writing simple sentences, just start. And as you start to do that, you realize those sentences turn into paragraphs. The next thing you know, you would have a book. <laughs> But that it's it's that simple. Remember what I said, it is simple. So don't think too much about it, just do it. Another way um, some people use journaling is to write letters to themselves. So you can write a letter to your future self. Okay. So there are different ways you can do it, but the point is you just have to start writing. So like before something manifests as well you kind of see signs of it beforehand mm -hmm. it's almost like a testing period where the universe is trying to see if this is really what you want it's kind of you start to see it somewhat manifesting your life and depending on how you feel and how you react to it it's like you know that i don't know it's, it's a i feel like there's a period of like it comes in your world just to see if you want it or not and then you can sift you see see, see no <laughs> <laughs> you just know what you're talking about <laughs> so your journal is that um is it specifically for people to do their own journal is there like um um is a mixture of journals and like your um in instructions or things like that no it's a guide okay. basically so there's a section that it's sectionized for different areas of your life okay right so you see career so it's just a guide to help you focus on the different areas of your life that is something a lot of people don't do mm. i realize yeah. so for instance you would you want this big amazing life but you have a problem breaking it down so focus on your feet, you focus on your career, your business, you focus on your health, different areas of your life to, to just focus on what you want for that area of your life. And if you're not sure how to get started with that, what I tell people is to first do an assessment. For instance, look at the wheel of life, look at the different areas of your life, your personal life, your business life, your health, your spiritual life. Look at the different areas and just rate yourself. This is again where you have to be honest with yourself, totally honest. All right? Rate each area of your life out of 10. And let's say you rate one area five. Why did you give it a five? These are questions you have to ask yourself. What would it take? What is missing to make up the difference for you to be able to give that area of your life a 10? So this is what all of this is about. Mm. To get you to focus on the different areas of your life and get clear on what you want for each area of your life. I like that. And my sticks. <laughs> and for the listeners who are not watching, the book is called Women to Women Network Manifested. And yeah, you can to find it. it you know. Where can they find it? Well, it would be on my website by the end of this week. Okay. <laughs> okay. By the time this, this releases, there would be. Yeah, it would be on Woman to Woman's website. Okay. okay. Awesome. I'm definitely going to cop that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Susan, we definitely appreciate you for your time and consideration and dropping such valuable gems with us today. I like to say valuable gems um, <laughs> because we we definitely the, po the po podcast is for us to learn from our guests and also share what we learn with the people that listen. So we appreciate you and we also appreciate our listeners um, and, you know, all of our supporters as well. And if you're ever in LA, definitely come down for a live recording as well. Yes, yes. No, careful what you're telling me, yeah, because my foot hurts. I am just like, babe, let's go so and so. And he'd be like, what? What's going on? And he'd say, okay, let's go, because we are both hot foot. We like to just get up and get out and do things. Well, so on. be very careful what you're telling me. 
We yeah, always we not... always invite the guests. Yeah. Yeah. And I <laughs> and we're serious about it too. Yeah, um, we have know, we love having in house guests. We have our oh. first repeat guest coming um this week. Or is it next week? Next Maybe week. next week. And we also have um a, another guest that is actually that we've had on a Zoom call before and he's visiting in April. So he's actually coming in to sit in. So that's nice. We hold up to that invitation. And we love spending time in the beach, so we'll definitely. <laughs> yes, we love the beach. Daytona. We're for... it was Daytona Beach. Oh, yeah. We've been to Daytona. Daytona Beach. Yes. Daytona. This guy remember? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That Daytona. Was cool. okay. It was really nice. Really nice. No, trust yeah. me. I've been to Daytona. It's, uh, yeah. We have some really nice beaches here. And you were so was like, oh, out of this world. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah i'm glad you remembered though because i was still curious like i wonder what do they have there in florida that you know, <laughs> similar to trinidad <laughs> it was it was really nice yeah. but i appreciate you guys thank you for having me i had so much fun and i have to say i just love what you all have going on here <laughs> i mean you're just laid back and casual and you know it's fun it's, it's nice it's nice i like yeah. it I appreciate it. Appreciate I'm glad it. you enjoyed it. And it shows this. you're a human. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for the listeners, you can find us at americangypsy.com and you can find consistent self improvement merch at luamlee.com. And if you're looking for some music to listen to, um, I have some music under Classic, K L A C C I K, Carpenter, C A R P E N T A, up T C A R P E N T A. And we have um, like some soundtracks of some instrumental stuff that we release under American Gypsy Podcast that you know, we've released before. So that's some of the music that's on there. If you guys are wondering what kind of music, it's some cello music and some other stuff, but instrumental music mostly. Thank you again to our listeners. Thank you again, Susan. And Thank you. consistent self-improvement to everyone. And peace. Peace. <laughs>